What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome back to the Fox Body content. Okay, and so today's video, I've been saying it, I haven't got to show you guys, but I've been having an overheating problem. And it's kind of like, a, it's been really hot in Southern California. It's been really hot. So that probably has a lot to do with it. And the other part is, I didn't bleed the system very well at all, so there's probably a bunch of air pockets in this my cooling system from when I have been messing with it. There's been coolant leaks, I, you know, there's, it it hasn't been burnt properly, so that's one of the things I gotta do. But I bought some parts to cool down this Fox body, and I'm gonna show you what I got real quick. But these parts will work for any kind of Fox body. It doesn't matter if you have a super crazy a hardcore Fox body or just a normal mild one. All of these things that I'm about to show you are good for cooling. So the first thing on the list is getting rid of my old radiator and replacing it with this SVE three row radiator. So the SVE it is probably not the greatest radiator out there. There's better ones. For sure, you can get the Fluidyne, there's the Derail, there's a bunch of ones that have a bigger inside diameter tube than this SVE 3 core one, but this still has a bigger cooling capacity and will be an upgrade over stock. And my radiator isn't even stock, it's the AutoZone replacement and with the plastic intakes and it's just, it's crap. <laughs> So we're gonna get rid of that and I'm sticking with the stock clutch fan because that thing can cool down anything Basically the stock clutch fan is good. It doesn't get a lot of um, recognition because It robs power. So let me show you another thing. That's part of the whole cooling system. That's actually pretty huge This water pump pulley which you really wouldn't think was a big deal, but it is so on my car I have underdrive pulleys. So that means that I have a bigger water pump pulley which actually underdrives the water pump that doesn't spin it as fast. So that water pump pulley that comes off a 93 Cobra, which you can get off LMR, that will actually overspin the water pump or spin the water pump faster and get your Fox Body Mustang cooled down. So if you have underdrive pulleys, that is a good way to fix it or put your stock pulley back on. But since I'm trying to go for a little extra cooling, I got the 93 Cobra overdrive pulley and that should really help out and cool down my Fox body. And so the rest of my cooling system I have checked and one of the things that had gone bad and probably a big reason why I was overheating as well too is the radiator cap was bad. So all of these things together is gonna fix my Fox body cooling system I'm hoping. So we're gonna give all this stuff a shot. We actually have new fluid. It's the Mishimoto liquid chill radiator fluid that we're gonna be putting in the car as well. And all of these things together should cool my Fox body down. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video is putting all this stuff on. And hopefully if you guys try this, it'll help you guys too. So to get the fluid out of the old radiator so we can put the new radiator in, there's two ways to do it. There's a plug on the bottom right side or passenger side of the radiator you can unscrew, or you could just take off the driver's side radiator hose, the bottom radiator hose, and put that into a bucket, which is what we're going to do, because we gotta take that thing off anyway, and might as well just do it that way. So this is the worst part of the whole thing, is draining the radiator, because it's just nasty. There's fluid everywhere, you get dirty, it's gross, I hate antifreeze, it's always everywhere, and we gotta do it a couple times because we're putting new fluid in it. <laughs> nice. No. And so while the coolant is leaking out into my bucket, um, we're gonna change out this water pump pulley real quick, which shouldn't take more than a couple seconds. So what we gotta do is unbolt the clutch fan from the water pump. It's easier to leave the belts on because then it won't want to spin on you while you're loosening them up. Ah. So here is our underdrive water pump pulley, which is big, and here is our Cobra one. So side by side. Yeah, this is gonna spin a lot better than this. I mean, just look at it. That's wild. So it's really going to work that thing. So let's get this thing put back on and see what kind of modifications we got to do to our belt. It's one thing after another. Look how much better that looks and it fits too. It's not nearly as close to this anymore. So hopefully that'll fix my cooling problems and give me a little bit more space. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take care of the belt situation later because I got to measure it with a string and it'll just be later. So, what we're gonna do now is unbolt the fan shroud from this radiator and just move it over onto the fan so it's out of the way. And then take the hardware and put it on our other radiator. Ok, 
Okay, so now I can just drop in the new radiator. Easy as that. <laughs> So, I don't know, when you're looking, for me, when I'm working on my car, I start seeing things and looking at things, and it's like, well, I need to drain this guy, the overflow tank, so let's look at it. And so I poured some water through it, and like, brown came out, like rusty, nasty brown. So, I decided, well, let's pour some more through it, and it won't go through. So, let's see if you can see that without me. Eee. So, that's not cool. So... We're gonna wash this thing out with the hose, dry it out, pour distilled water through it, and clean it up, because that's, that's bad. That's like really bad. That's, ugh. It's like poo-poo in there. Like really thick, gross poo-poo. I don't want that going through my car. So, we're gonna clean out this overflow tank before we call it good. Let me show you what I got done, because I kinda got carried away and just started doing things. So. The radiator is installed, it looks very nice. So there we go, there is the black SVE radiator. It looks really nice in the engine bay. Got both the hoses hooked up, but the overflow tank isn't on. It is soaking in um, some radiator cleaner stuff. So I do gotta go to the store, get some distilled water, pour it all in this thing, cause we're gonna try to flush it out, get that old green stuff out, and then we can put the Mishimoto Super Chill in there, which is blue. It's a really weird color. I'm gonna go to the store, and I'll be right back. So, we finally got this cleaned as best we can look. There's no more. Ooh, it looks bad on camera. It doesn't look that bad in person. In person, it looks a lot better. That was, that looked way worse on camera. So, we're gonna get this put back on, and then we're gonna fill the whole system up with distilled water. I wanna get all that green stuff out and put the blue stuff in. All right, so now that we got our distilled water and our flush, Start the car up, get it heated up, get that new crap flowing through its veins, and something, my brain went blank. Oh, and then we can drain it out again, which I don't know if I'm gonna do tonight, but you know what, let's just get it up to temp. Seventy-two hours later. Okay, so I started trying to flush out the system, and there's a lot of green antifreeze in here. It, a lot harder than I anticipated. So I would probably flushed it out like three times, and it still has green antifreeze in it. So we're gonna get back onto it today and flush the rest of it out and get this blue Mishimoto stuff in here. It's taking for. Ever. And then we'll bleed the system out. Forget all the stupid water bubbles and every or air bubbles, not water bubbles. Almost there. Oh, finally got it all out. So no more green stuff in there. It's time for blue stuff. So we're gonna fill this thing up since it's the block is all filled up with distilled water now. <laughs> we're gonna just put straight um, antifreeze in there and then start it up and burp it. And so I'm gonna go with the burping method of putting a jack underneath your control arm and jacking that side up way high to try to get the air bubbles because the radiator cap is not the highest point in the cooling system. So I gotta get that thing up there, get the bubbles out of it. So I'm gonna put the little concentrated additive in first. I used to use this stuff in my dirt bike, or the same color. I don't know if it's the same stuff, but same color. Look at that blue. It's cool looking. Look at it. That's cool looking. It's like water. I don't think it's not water. It's like ocean blue water. I don't know. It's neat. It's fitting for this Mustang. So you can see I have it jacked up on this side so that this part where the radiator cap goes is the highest part in the engine bay. And then I got my funnel in here. Look, there's an air bubble. There's another air bubble. And, um, wow. Okay. Well, it's doing it by itself as we speak. So, but we're going to start the car and then get everything flowing and it should suck down a lot. Oh my goodness, we finally got that done. That took, it, on camera, it's gonna be like five minutes. But for me, it was like five days. Well, it was, I took a break, but that was still really tough. That was, 
Oh, I remember how much I don't like antifreeze. Uh, through all my videos, I have not liked antifreeze. So that is one step. Holy, hopefully we got this cooling problem taken care of. I think I am gonna drive it and see if that is, so I'll try to take you guys along. All right, so I drove it around the neighborhood. I was trying to get a video of it, but I was getting upset because it didn't fix it, like at all. So it still just creeps up and keeps getting hotter and hotter. And I don't know why it keeps getting hotter and hotter. I I don't know. So I gotta figure this out. I so irritating. Very irritating. So we did the radiator, bigger radiator. We did the what do we do? Oh, water pump pulley, new fluid, and we bled the system pretty good and none of it fixed it. So electric contour fans maybe? I don't know. I gotta go back to the drawing board and see that there's nothing crazy. Cause what it's doing is weird. And it didn't do this when it was naturally aspirated. So it has something to do with the turbo. And I'm wondering if it's cause I got these stupid uh, Flowmaster Super 44 mufflers on here. It's just the thought. I don't know if it's correct or not, but it's just the thought that since it doesn't have enough um, airflow going out the back that it's making it so the exhaust can't breathe and that in turn is making it run hot because what, I, it's just a theory. It's one of, it's just a theory. A lot of boring math later. We're taking some extreme measures to really make sure it's worked. I opened the exhaust up just in case the back pressure was making it run too hot. It was 95 degrees out when I was driving it. I didn't think about that. California just sucks and we're hot. Let's give this a shot. We're getting air bubbles, so that's a good thing. We'll see where it goes. Okay, so it was dark. I wasn't able to bring you guys with me. I gotta figure out a mount for this camera because it's like in the way all the time. Can't figure it out. Whatever, whatever. So, this is where we're at. So, I'm driving down the road, 187. Like, dead, 187. 190, that three degree window is where it likes to live while I'm driving down the road. Um, right now, I don't, it's like probably 85 degrees, eight, maybe 80 degrees outside. It just, that's what it likes. It likes 187 to 190, which is 10 degrees above the thermostat. You know, the little degrees thing can be a little off on whatever. So, but that's where it likes to live. And I drove it up and down the street and it was fine. Um, at idle, it just slowly goes up it takes time it does not like media it's just so I think that my clutch fan is just in, in up to snuff I read somewhere that the high volume water pumps do not turn the clutch fan as well I don't know if that's true or not but you know anything's possible at this point all right so I have one more thing I thought it was over I thought it was over but when I went to sleep last night, I was thinking of things. What could have gone wrong? Why isn't it cooling? Why is it so weird? Why is it, when I'm driving, it just likes to stay at 187, like money, money. And then when I uh, come to a stop, it just keeps going up and up and up and up and it doesn't stop. It just gets to like 210. It doesn't boil over. Just like the temperature tips keep going up, going up. And I was like, hmm, well, my clutch fan is what 35 years old right now 2021 yeah 35 years old i wonder if it's bad it could definitely be bad <laughs> so i think the clutch fan is bad it's never been replaced um yeah and now it has to suck stuff through the radiator if it wasn't like working at its top peak performance it's not gonna get the job done with a new intercooler on there and a thicker radiator and all that other crap on there so i think that's it so i went and bought one Da, 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 da. And so I had a, like a really hard time deciding if I wanted a severe duty or a heavy duty. Um, like for a severe duty is like an F-250 clutch pan and a heavy duty is just a, like a Mustang with AC. Um, so I ended up doing a lot of research, doing a lot of research and I went with the heavy duty because it's supposed to be not like is extremely painfully loud, um, but it is still loud they say. And we're gonna just test it out. If it doesn't work, we'll try the severe duty. We can always go and try that. So we're gonna get this heavy duty put on real quick and see how it goes. So I'm no expert, you know, I'm just a, an average guy that likes to work on cars. He gets frustrated at the little things, you know. So 
Once I show you this fan clutch, you, you'll know. You'll know. So, what looks wrong with this picture? Anything? Well, the thermal spring is gone. The... That guy, the thermal spring, is not there. <laughs> that... God dang it. That makes a lot of sense. So the fan was just going one speed all the time, which I kind of thought was happening. <laughs> Oh my god, it was so, it was so simple. And it was right there in front of me the whole time. How does stuff like that happen? It's just the little things that piss you off. And you know what? Uh, yeah, I probably just smacked it and it fell off. I have no idea what happened, but there's the problem. Found it. <laughs> I guess after 35 years, stuff's bound to fall off, you know? So that should fix it, I'm hoping. I, I, it should fix it. <laughs> God dang it! All right, well, I'm happy though. I'm glad we found that, so let's, let's put the new one on real quick. It's a beautiful day, and I got no time to waste on this beautiful day. All right, so we found out the problem. It's a good day. We're I'm on fire again, you know. We're, no, you can't see her. I'll get you there. So, Southern California's on fire again. I fixed my Mustang. It's just like last year. <laughs> So, I've um, ended up painting my fan shroud because the brown color was ugly. So here, so I painted that old fan shroud black and it should be a lot nicer. But, I think that's the end of the video. Finally, after like a hundred different tries, finally found the problem. And I am stoked to find that problem. That was killing me. It was like such a weird, it just slowly. So that fan was spinning, but it was only spinning one speed. Are you Duh. I can't believe it fell out. How does that even happen? I, it probably got old and cracked and broke off. You know, it's 35 years old. I mean, stuff breaks. So, I'm just beyond happy right now. Finally time to get this Pimp XS in there. MS3, baby. Very excited about that. But on that, I will catch you guys on the next video. And I'm going to enjoy this beer.